What's up everyone? It has been a minute since I've last posted. Uh, posting will continue to be irregular. I might, might post uh, this year, might post next year, who knows? I wanna talk about Apple's new M2 Max. Uh, specifically, we have the Mac Mini and then the uh, MacBook Pros. Now, uh, since my last video, I have since upgraded computers. I was rocking the M1 iMac and it was really, really awesome. But since I've upgraded to the M1 Pro uh, MacBook Pro and it's the base model one, uh, it has 16 gigs of RAM. And um, the only thing that was upgraded was the SSD uh, upgraded to one terabyte. But what I wanted to come in here and talk about was uh, I guess the hype around the uh, M1, the M2 Max. I'm a huge YouTube fan. I'm always on YouTube watching uh, different reviews, different videos. Anytime Apple comes up with a new computer, I'm like waiting for uh, different reviewers to talk about it. All the videos on all the computers. These YouTubers will hype up these computers. The issue that I have is for the most part, these YouTube YouTubers get the spec'd out, maxed out $8,000 models. When they're given these amazing computers, um, they talk about it like they're amazing because they are amazing, but they're also like $8,000. And so when I upgraded from the M1 to the M1 Pro, I was expecting like massive increase in performance. In all reality, there wasn't a huge increase with performance from the M1 to the M1 Pro. As a video editor, a content creator, um, I was expecting like these, you know, pretty big increases. Uh, but in all reality, I didn't really see any. Um, which was a little bit disappointing. Now I am generally editing stuff that is 6K. Essentially it should have been able to handle it pretty well. Usually I don't do too many streams over the top of, of the footage in my timeline, but I get a lot of stuttering, a lot of playback issues, and maybe that's that's because I am using uh, Premiere. I know Premiere is like the least consistently uh, reliable out of all of the uh, uh, editors out there from um, Final Cut Pro to DaVinci Resolve. I have been considering switching to DaVinci Resolve. It's just been kind of daunting uh, because I'm so comfortable in Premiere. But the M1 Pro was a little bit disappointing. Now this isn't really a review, it's mostly just kind of like a rant. Not that the M1 MacBook Pro is all bad. It has a really lot of awesome things going about it. I love the display. Uh, I usually edit off of uh, two monitors and that's the monitor that I look at while I'm color grading because it's it's really accurate and I know that I can just trust it and like with the contrast ratio, everything, it's a really, really good display. Another thing that I really do love is the SD card slot. I've had no issues with the SD card slot. I love it. It's really nice to have. One thing that I think it didn't need was an HDMI port. Another USB-C port would have been preferable. Uh, you can use HDMI, USB-C to HDMI. It's really nice. USB-C is super versatile. And uh, while Apple might have been a little bit early to jump on USB-C, I think they were right for it because I've loved USB-C, it's really nice. And to go back to having three USB-C ports instead of four, um, not, not a huge difference, uh, but I do really like the ability to have all of that uh, power of USB-C. Um, and HDMI is just kind of limiting, so. But what is the point of this video? Um, I guess I don't really know. I just kind of wanted to rant a little bit about it. Um, but while you're watching your reviewers, take all of their reviews as a grain of salt because I have run into a lot of stuttering with the M1 Pro. Uh, I've run into issues with crashing. It's not as hyped up as as I thought it would be. A lot of that could just be me thinking like, oh, this is gonna be perfect. It's gonna solve all my problems. No computer will solve all your problems. You'll still run into issues with something. I think when I went from my 2017 MacBook Pro that I paid like $2,300 for, and then to my iMac, which was $1,400, I think that I was just blown away by the price to performance ratio because it did perform better than my 2017 uh, MacBook Pro. So me going from the iMac to the MacBook Pro, I thought I would see some incredible performance jumps, uh, but in reality, I did not see those. I also have edited a few projects using um, footage from Ari cameras, RED cameras. So it's still an impressive computer and the amount of things that it can do for the price is still really good. If you're someone that's just getting into video editing uh, or if you're mostly editing with like 4K footage, I'd say go for it, it's really good. And obviously there's the M2 MacBook Pros out there now. And so go for those. 
But again, I just want to remind everyone, while you're looking for your computer, take it with a grain of salt because you'll still have some issues. It might not be able to handle all of your workload. Uh, maybe it will. And if it does, that's great. I just don't want anyone to be disappointed like I was. So yeah, just have some real expectations and I think you'll be great. So uh, thanks for watching. I do want to do more YouTube videos, but yeah, this is just kind of a little rambling on uh, my experience with uh, getting a M1 Pro, MacBook Pro, and uh, just about a little, a little bit of my frustration and with reviewers getting the top of the line products because in all reality, a lot of us might not be able to afford the $8,000 MacBook Pro. We can just afford the $2,000 MacBook Pro. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one whenever that is.